So what I've done here is in fact, um, commented out some of the code um, again, just to keep this very clean and um, one function at a time. What I've commented out is mostly the React, uh, apologies, the Express server code um, and to turn this into an Express application. So what I want to focus on is purely the Firebase library for now, the configuration that we brought in, and then the Firebase initialize app method, which uses our configuration up here. So whatever's defined up here is in this variable, we call it in here. So let's save this. And I've explained this method or microservice already. So let's try to deploy this and see what happens. So what Firebase is going to do now is deploy the new um, microservice or method. It's going to see this as new because it didn't already exist in our uh, console. Let's see, we've got some errors here. And what are these errors? This is line 50. Yeah, let's get rid of this await here, save, and try that again. Okay, that's looking a bit better just now. In fact, it cannot find Firebase. So we did a rookie mistake here. Uh, we need to install Firebase. And it tells you here, try running npm install. And it's going to install our Firebase module for us by npm. npm install. Hit enter. And that should install it quite quickly. Try to, try to redeploy again just now. Firebase deploy. Click enter. Uh, oh, we're not in the functions directory. Silly me. Install it in there. You could come back out and Firebase deploy. And you could scroll through your recent uh, commands by using the up and down arrows. Hmm, still cannot find module Firebase. Let's see. Let's be explicit this time um, and actually and just say install um, Firebase module on its own. So go into the functions directory and call your install command again. And instead, this time type in Firebase. This should pull down the latest version of Firebase. You can see there's 7.15.5, I think it was. Cool, let's try to come out of that directory and try to do a deploy again. It's getting a bit further this, this time, so fingers crossed. You can see our functions there sign up and hello world
you've got a message there as well from cloud functions it's telling you it will soon require pay as you go plan which is called blaze to be uh, enabled so look out for messages like these that might give you hints in case you run into um, the the dashboard uh, errors uh, and, and the console so give it a few more moments so cool once it's finished you'll see the new uh, microservice endpoint here it just ends with sign up so it should be the same as before and it gives you your function name there so what we can do before we go ahead and test this out just want you to note and remember that this method this microservice does a request checks the request type looks in the body for two variables email and password and we use the firebase authentication library and the function called create user with email and password and we need the email and the password from the user from the body of the request in order to execute this method once it's, once it's successful the user is created and we'll be able to see them in the authentication table over here so let's give this a try grab our url here and just to point out what i mean if you're new to rest um, api authentication methods rest methods any sign up uh, and, and api development you might try to put that url up in here and it should fail i believe because it's expecting a body of the email and password as you can see here the request is not allowed because in the browser um, we're not able to tell the function and the microservice we're making this request from a um, from a method that's post okay so from your application whether it's a mobile app or a website when you can do this with fetch library and with fetch api or library you can pass in that it's post if it's post you give it a password and an email ad and an email address that will work because we want to save time doing that we could just do this in postman quite quickly so take our url go over here paste it and we could change the method here these are all the rest and uh, methods we need a post because we're actually adding data again to see that same error message let's do a get for instance just to show you um, so that's what the browser will probably be doing if you go to send there you go the same error message as we saw in the browser there you go, right there so let's change this to a post it's gonna say probably it can't find the email and the password in the body so send there you go the request could not be handled and that's what it really means so go to the body click body up here data type click on raw change this drop down of data type to json and then here we could pass in in a javascript object or json object um sorry the email it needs to be stringified so give it double inverted quotes marks and your email address and then next comma and give it the password as well that has to be in double inverted quote marks as well so in here we could write john doe for instance at mail.com to give an email address could be any email address you want password let's go for one two three four five six pass now to show you this working i'm going to make this a bit smaller i'm going to bring in our console right here to show you how quick this is as well when i add this user that's the user there as well bring this here when i add this user called john doe with this password 
we would see them over here in the authentication table pretty quickly. So three, two, one, go. There you go. We send that through. Check our response type first. It was okay, 200. We got success through. In fact, here it would have done it in a split second, but we need to hit this refresh uh, button here. There we go, John Doe. Let's try that again. So what we can do is um, go to the body. Where is our body up here? Oh, wrong one. No. Yeah, here's the here's a body. Let's go for Tom. Same password, send, refresh, Tom. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, and yeah, so I hope that's useful. That's our sign up method ready. And again, if you wanted to implement this, this is already there now up and running in your cloud microservices. All you need to do is build a mobile app, a desktop app, or a website web application, create a form um, with email and password. When you click send, call this method here with something like fetch on the front end. We could cover that in future videos. And once you do that, the user will be added pretty quickly in your application. So once they're here, then what you can do is have a sign in form and pull in these details. Um, for instance, Tom, and then if you know the password, sign into the application. So that's the next thing I was going to cover. Sign in is easy, just as that as well. Um, what you do here, in fact, is you'll just change this method here to, if you can see here, it's already available there. Sign in with email and password. And if you hover over it, it will tell you it needs the email and password as parameters as well. And if I did that, I gave it email and password. It would work as well straight out of the box. Um, let me just undo that. Cool. The only caveat with sign in is you could sign in on the back end. However, in um, the browser won't know about it at all unless you use a object to check the state of the user's sign in state. Okay, so if you use sign in and you're trying to find out if the user sign in or not in your application or a web page for instance that's easy to do but you can't just sign in from here from this microservice um, if there was a sign in one and then expect the application to know the sign in or the authentication state it won't work to do that uh, firebase needs to download some local data into your browser session and it uses something called their on auth um, state object so if we look at that, I won't implement it in this video, but I'll just show you where that is. If we go up here, on all the state changed, and you click here, and it tells you here how to create a user, which we've done the same way they've explained, and then get the current signed in user. Here it is, it will be firebase.auth on auth state changed if and then you give it a callback variable of user if that user is true you could do something the user will be signed in else the user is not signed in so you could chuck them out or not allow them into a private area 